This is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The subject of our FBI file, murder. Its title, The Phantom Hitchhiker. A special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation has something in common with a good newspaper reporter. Before writing a story... The newspaper man must find the answers to five questions. Who, what, where, when, and how. The special agent must also know that, and more. If possible, he must also learn why the crime was committed, what weapons were used, whether or not there were accomplices, and how much was gained. It is a yardstick of their thoroughness that no case of false arrest has ever been proved against a member of your FBI. That record did not come as a result of any accident. It came because every special agent is a trained professional law enforcement officer. And also because every special agent accepts each assignment as a challenge. Last year, for example, FBI men put in more than a million hours of overtime with not a single penny's pay. Those facts are important to you. For they illustrate the care taken by your FBI before an arrest is made. The scrupulous care exemplified in the case you are about to hear. Tonight's FBI file opens in a national park located in a western state. FBI Special Agent Taylor has just greeted Captain Wilson of the state police. How far do these tire tracks run, Captain? Up the slope and around in back of those trees. That where the body was found? Yep, in among the trees. Where's the victim now? At the morgue. They'll hold the body to see if we get any identification. I understand there were no labels in the man's clothes. Not one. But I took his fingerprints and airmailed them to Washington. How is he dressed? City clothes, suit, shirt, and tie. Anything in his pockets? They were all turned inside out like they'd been emptied in a hurry. How about physical evidence? No blood stains around or any sign of a fight. It, let's hold it here. Okay. Now, as you can see, there's one set of tire tracks this far, and on the other side of the rut, there are quite a few. Yeah. The way I figure, the car that made the single set got stuck in this rut. Mm -hmm. And those other tracks were made by a car coming up the other side to haul him out. Yeah. Have you, uh... Check the towing services? I haven't had a chance yet. How many are there? Oh, three or four east of the park and half a dozen on the west side. Well, we're closer to the west. Let's cover them first. That night, in a roadside diner on the outskirts of a nearby town, an elderly woman sits in front of the cash register as a girl comes out of the kitchen. What are you eating now, Lucy? A donut. Eating, eating, all the time eating. It's kind of slow tonight, Granny. Let's go to the movies. Not nine o'clock yet. What difference does that make? There isn't any traffic. Lucy, someday when I'm gone and you're running the place, you'll understand the things I've been telling you. Those extra few dollars you take in staying open late is the difference between making and losing. There's a car pulling in. You see what I mean? Uh-huh. Well, it's a full car, too. Oh, gee, I'm tired. I hope they just want coffee in. Oh, only one person getting out. Why, it looked for a minute like... Why, Lucy, it's Bill. Bill? I thought he was gone for good. Me, too. He's dropping his gear outside. He sure got plenty of it. Hey! Hello! Hello, buddy. Hello, Bill. How are you? Oh, How are you? Anyway? Sit 
splendid. So good to see you. <laughs> Just let me look at you. Oh, Bill, you haven't changed a bit. Well, now, you've changed, Granny. You know, you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, why didn't you bring your friends in? My friends? The folks who dropped you outside. Oh, oh them. Uh, they just give me a hitch. I, I found my way back. Well, a girl, go get Bill a menu. No, no, not now. I just want to sit here. Uh, Stretch my bones. Oh, stand. <laughs> oh. Boy. You've got a real nice sunburn, Bill. <laughs> You're looking pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Young man, by right, I ought to be mad at you. Yeah, what for? The day you left, you said you'd write to me. Oh, Granny, I, I was so tired nights, all I could do was just bunk down and close my eyes. Did you go south like you figured? I've been all over. I picked me up a job with a combine team. We worked from Texas clean up into Canada. Oh, it must be swell going different places. Oh, Lucy, I've had my fill of traveling. You going to stay here, Pete? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Figure I'll see if I can find me a little ranch. Well, they cost money. Well, now I saved me a couple thousand dollars. My sake. Mm -hmm. Bill, you sure you don't want to eat? Well, maybe I could stand the coffee. We got some of my apple pie. <laughs> now I know I'm home. Oh. <laughs> Where are you staying, Bill? Well, I got my gear outside. Figured I'd move into my old place out back. The cabin's rented. Yeah. Huh? You got competition now, boy. Who? Fella named George Porter. Don't think you know him. No, no. Well, if it'll do you any good, we can put you up for tonight. That'd be fine. Oh, but Granny, where will he stay? In the cabin. George won't be back from Cheyenne till morning. Well, I'd sure appreciate it. Well, you get your gear and put it up there. And by the time you get back, I'll have a man-sized dinner all cooked up for you. Evening, Captain. Hello, Tom. Tom Knox, this is Agent Taylor of the FBI. How are you, sir? Howdy. Glad to know you. Thank you. Mr. Knox, have you had any towing calls in the park today? Yeah, yeah. Just got back from one. Oh. Had any earlier in the day? Yeah, four, I think. Mr. Knox, I'd like to take a look at this map. If you yeah, will. sure will. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Right here, there's a rut almost as deep as a trench running from some trees up here. Down to the highway. There. Yeah, I know. I pulled a car out of there about noon. What kind? Uh, it was a 51 convertible. Light blue. Did you make out a ticket on the job? Yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how this book gets into my pocket so easy and comes out so hard. Well, here we are. Any name? No, he paid cash. By Jingo, he certainly could afford it. <laughs> he had a roll of bills as big as that there. <clears throat> You remember anything about the car? Now, let me see. Carried a Wyoming license. Looked like a new wax job, and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he uh, blew a tire when he hit that rut. Oh. Right front wheel. I didn't have any white walls, so he's riding around three white and one black. How many people were in the car? Well, just the driver. What did he look like? Oh, average, about five foot ten. Kind of heavy set. About 35, maybe 40 year old. Remember anything else? Well, I guess he'd been hunting. He had a rifle and a mess of gear in the back seat. How's he dressed? Well, he just had jeans and a blue shirt. You wear glasses? No, no. He had uh, kind of a kind of a leathery skin, like say, uh, oh, like a cow hand. I'm afraid that's not much help around here. Anything unusual about the uh, way he talked? Yeah, no, he he didn't say much. Well, after you told him back to the road, which direction did he take? Well, he headed up that way. Mm. Car seem to be damaged in any way? No, no, not so I could tell. Well, then you'd have no reason to stop for repairs, huh? No, didn't have to stop the gas either. The needle on his gauge was right up on the full mark. Hmm. That means the car must have been gassed up close to where it had the blowout. No, no more than 15 or 20 miles. Any stations in the park, Captain? No, but there are a half dozen or so just beyond the east entrance. One of them might remember the car. Yeah, but they'd all be closed by now. Well, then I'll cover them first thing in the morning. <laughs> Lucy? Hi, George. Hi. <laughs> How was the city? Uh, okay, but I'm sure glad to get back. Hey, those donuts look good. Can I have a couple? Sure. <laughs> and some coffee. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Where's Granny? Oh, I'm right here. Ah, 
<laughs> well, I got the things you wanted. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Here's your bowl of material. Oh. Hope it's the right color. Oh, that'll make up fine. Here's a new needle for your sewing machine. Well. And the pattern book. Say, thank you, Roy. <laughs> Wait a minute. you got to change color. Why, you remembered everything. <laughs> there. And, Lucy, well, I got you a new movie magazine. Oh, thanks, George. Oh, Granny, look at this guy's picture on the cover. Huh? Oh, too skinny. I like a man big enough so you can't see front and back without moving. Like George here. <laughs> or Bill. Who? Oh, you mean Lucy ain't told you about her old boyfriend coming home? No. You better stay close to home from now on, or Bill Brown will steal Lucy right out from under your nose. Oh, Granny. What's he want around here? He come back to settle down. Mm. Why, George, you ain't jealous. Mm. <laughs> no, whoever gets Lucy will have to feed her. I'd be pleased to do that. <laughs> well, fine, then you can just start in right now and get us some lunch. Captain, I found the gas station the dead man stopped at. Where? Seven miles the other side of the park. The attendant recognized the victim's picture. Oh, and he told me about a man who might be the killer. Who is that? A hitchhiker the car owner picked up at the station. The attendant have any idea who he was? No, he said he came down out of the hills yesterday morning, asked for permission to hang around, try and thumb a ride. Hmm. Oh, and while he was waiting, he showed the attendant some trick shots. Uh, here, these are a few of his cartridge cases. Where'd you get them? Out of the station trash can. Pardon me. Sure. Captain Wilson. Yes, that's right. You have? Near Claytonville. I see. Just a minute. Taylor. Yeah? One of my men just found the dead man's car. Afternoon. Afternoon. Granny and Lucy out. Mm hmm. You must be George. That's right. You Bill Brown? Uh huh. Anything special you come for? I can wait. What was it? I had some grub for a hunting trip. Hey, as long as I'm here, I'll have some coffee. Hmm. So you're not staying around here? Uh huh. Why? I like it here. Like the place, like the folks. There. Oh, thanks. You kind of working? I'm going to start me a ranch. Help situation ain't good around here. Uh, I'll get by him. Well, I'll see you around. Hey. Coffee's a dime. Oh. Can you, can you break a ten? Anything smaller? Mm, no. Look, you just tell Granny I owe her a dime, huh? Don't come back just for that. Why not? I think it'd be better if you found someplace else to eat. Whose idea is that? Mine. Look, I didn't ask Lucy to wait for me. She didn't. And there's no ring on her finger. There will be. Well, till there is, here's something for you to think about. If I still want her, nobody will stop me. Back to the FBI file, The Phantom Hitchhiker. Each file dramatized on this program is chosen for a specific reason. For different cases illustrate different methods by which you may help fight crime. 
and even more important, may help prevent crime. Tonight you see another example to substantiate advice given by your FBI in the past. Advice some motorists refuse to heed. Don't pick up hitchhikers. The Federal Bureau of Investigation never fails to get reports from every section of the country about robberies, beatings, murders that followed from the generous but foolhardy impulse of a driver to give a lift to a stranger. Not every hitchhiker is a criminal, but some of them are. Don't allow yourself the luxury of thinking you can tell the difference. You can't. Tonight's FBI file continues later that afternoon at Captain Wilson's office. Agent Taylor has just entered. Captain, whoever abandoned the car knew enough to wipe it clean of prints. That means we still don't have much to work on. Well, here are the license and motor numbers. No, thanks. We'll get off a teletype to the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Okay. Uh, nothing in the car that would give you any idea who the victim was, huh? No, all I found was an empty match cover. I couldn't raise any latent prints, but the lab might. There's time to make the 5 o'clock Washington plane. Oh, good. Hey, yeah, uh, that cover's in this envelope. I'll have a wrap. Fine. Captain, where would you buy rifle shells in Claytonville? The general store? Why? Might help to find out who buys two seventy caliber ammunition. That's pretty common around here. Charlie. Yes, Captain? Got a match cover in here. Wrap it and send it to the FBI lab. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Say, these are from Granny's Diner. Yeah, but they don't say what city. Her place is near where that car was found. Oh? Let's go by the general store, Captain, then head for that diner. In some investigations, the facts are easily accessible. In others, like this case, almost no progress is visible for a time. Then the log jam breaks. The State Motor Vehicle Bureau reported that the car owner was Andrew Mercer of Canyon Springs. While Agent Taylor was in the general store, Captain Wilson called to notify Mercer's family and learned that the dead man had been on his way home carrying $2,000 in cash. Any chance of getting the serial numbers of that money that Mercer had? No, his wife had no idea which slaughterhouse he sold the cattle to. she give you anything that might help? Descriptions of her husband's watch, ring, and a kind of a fancy money clip. No. Uh-huh. How'd you make out in the store? Well, I've got the names of about a hundred people here. They all bought 270 ammunition during the past month. They listed in any particular order? Yeah, by date. Bottom name bought some this afternoon. Who's that? Uh, Ken Adams. Don't know him. Next one's R.W. Carson. That doesn't ring any bell. Bill Brown. Wait a minute. You know him? Yeah. And he ties in with that match cover. Oh, how? He used to live in a cabin behind the diner before he left town a couple of years ago. I didn't know he was back. But if he is, he's probably been dropping in at Granny's. Does Brown fit the description? As well as anybody else. Let's talk to him first. <laughs> Evening, Miss Fremont. Well, hello, Captain. This is Agent Taylor of the FBI. Glad oh, to meet you. Fremont. Here's my granddaughter. Hello there. And this is George Porter. Oh, hello, hello, George. George. Like a menu? Oh, no, thanks, ma'am. We came by for some information. About what? A man named Bill Brown. Is he around? Well, no, but he was. When did he get back? Last night. About uh, quarter to nine. Uh, Lucy, there's a stack of dishes at the kitchen that want washing. Oh, but Granny... Get to doing them. Come on, Lucy. I'll drive for you. Oh, all right. Miss Fremont, are you sure Brown got here before nine last night? Yes. Why? The train was 20 minutes late. Well, that don't matter. He hitchhiked home. That could mean he came through the park yesterday, Captain. When did you see Brown last? Well, just about an hour ago. He was in to get supplies. Oh, for what? Hunting trip. Said he thought he'd try his luck up near Rocky Point. Mm. Where is that, Captain? Close to where that car blew a tire. Could we make it up there now? Yeah, but it'd be almost impossible finding him in the dark. Now, well, if he's taking food, he might stay in a few days. Oh, he's got enough food for a week. Well, I guess that's all we need to know. Yeah, well, thank you, Mrs. Freeman. Good night, Granny. Well, say, now, I'm sorry you boys won't have a cup of coffee. Thanks, just the same. Captain, as long as we've got some time tonight, let's go back to your office and go over that list of names that I got, huh? All right. 
Hey. What? Hmm? Over here. Well, I thought you were drying dishes. Well, I sneaked out to tell you something. Oh, and what's that? Well, Granny and Lucy left me to run the place this afternoon. While I was doing it, this Bill Brown come in. When he paid his check, he took out a roll of bills that must have been this big. Huh? Must have been over $2,000. Did you happen to notice whether his money was loose or held by a clip? Yeah, there was a thing holding the bills, a, a silver dollar with little diamonds in it stuck on some horns. Money was in between the horns, and down at the bottom, where they come together, there was writing, like a man's name. Mm. Captain, can you spare any men to go up with us tomorrow morning? I'm afraid not. But if Porter wants to help, I can deputize him. Mr. Porter, you got a rifle? Sure. Well, if Captain Wilson deputized you, could you come along? I'll be glad to help. Okay. Meet us at the captain's office at 5.30. I can't see Wilson anymore. I guess he's up the other side of the trees. Yeah. Easy, boy, now. You go hunting much, Mr. Taylor? No, I don't have the time anymore. What do you hunt up here? Oh, mountain goat, elk, bear. Sounds great. <laughs> that Wilson? No. No, he said he'd shoot three shots if he found Brown first. Oh. Come on, boy. How long you known, Brown? Only met him once. What's you like? Well, I don't know him enough to like him or to hate him. Know what I mean? Yeah. Easy, boy. The only reason I'm helping is that I want to do right. Yeah, I'm sure of that. Hold on. That was the captain's signal. Let me a rifle, will you? Yeah, here. His shots come from up there in the grove. Okay, let's go. Oh, as soon as we get inside, I'm sitting down. Oh, my feet are killing me. Lucy, the lights are on. Well, I didn't leave them on, Granny. Well, they're on. What? George is here. Yeah, you both could have stayed in town. I've been taking care of the place. Well, didn't you go with the state trooper? Sure, but I've been back for a couple of hours. Well, what happened? Well, we found Brown, and that FBI fella asking him some questions he couldn't answer. What kind of questions? Oh, about who he hitched rides with and where he got the wad of money he was carrying. Well, he told me he saved it. He said the same thing to us. I guess the captain and the FBI fella didn't believe him. They took him down to the courthouse. What did they say he did? Robbed somebody in the park and killed him. No. Huh. Why, Hi, folks? Oh, well. Uh, hope I'm still welcome around here. Bill, we heard you was arrested. Well, we've just released Mr. Brown, ma'am. Well, he practically admitted killing that man. How'd you know why we were looking for him? Well, I. I figured I, I read about the thing in the papers. You didn't read about the money clip. You made Agent Taylor suspicious when you described it so perfectly. Yeah, I didn't see how you could have gotten that good a look at it if Brown only took it out for a minute. I got good eyes. I'm a crack shot. Captain, you know that. So does Agent Taylor. Yes, I saved those shells I fired from your gun this morning. What for? To compare the markings with shells I picked up at a gas station. The one where you showed the attendant those trick shots. George, what are they talking about? I don't know. The United States Commissioner thinks you do, Porter. He issued this warrant for your arrest. George Porter was convicted of murder on a government reservation and was sentenced to death. In tonight's case, you saw an FBI special agent in cooperation with the state police, perform two prime functions of any law enforcement agency, apprehending the criminal and freeing from suspicion the innocently accused. 
Your FBI is proud of its record in both those categories. In addition to pride, there is also gratitude to the state police, the county sheriffs, and all local law enforcement agencies throughout the nation. For the Federal Bureau of Investigation gets the kind of cooperation exemplified tonight from officers everywhere. To each of them, from the lonely patrolman walking a desolate beat, to the chief of police, your FBI takes this public opportunity to express sincere and grateful thanks. Incidents used in tonight's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production.